Mitch Shambam here. Thanks for joining me today. This is the security news update for the week ending August 27th, 2023. Um, and another case, and just, I'm sorry, I just can't get over this. The University of Minnesota was hacked. Um, they lost uh, a bunch of data. And apparently, you know, they have no data retention policy. So, or maybe they do. The data retention policy is we keep everything we've ever created because after all, why not? Um, so they lost data back to 1989, which is about 25 years. This was when they went off and first started digitizing data. And, you know, you think about this, you know, IBM says that it cost about $164 per record breached in 2022. So let's, let's assume that IBM is being optimistic or pessimistic, and it's really $100 per record instead of $164. So if you got 7 million records, you know, that's 700 million bucks, uh, the cost of the breach. And, and I can believe that in this particular case. They also say that for bigger breaches, it costs more per record, but let's ignore that for the moment. So let's say they just cut that data in half and they archived half of the data, say, you know, from 89 to 2000. All of a sudden now your, your likely li liability is cut from, you know, basically three quarters of a billion dollars to significantly less than half a billion dollars. You got, you got to look at the question here of, is keeping this data from 1999 spinning around a place where everybody can get to it? And remember, you can still archive it and just do it much more securely. Um, is the is the the benefit of possibly maybe sometimes, probably never, looking at data from 1989, uh, is it worthwhile enough to go off and risk, you know, spending an extra... $350 million if it's breached. Um, people don't think about this. And you know, this is why data retention policies are important. And uh, you know, if you need help building a data retention policy, then you know, give us a holler and we'll be happy to go uh, help you with that. Um, next, uh, $67.784 billion. This is a website that's talking about crypto fraud and Web3. And it says that that's, that is the amount of fraud and losses that they have detected and, and this is way way underrepresented because this is just the stuff they've discovered um in the last few years 67 billion dollars of crypto fraud just think of what you or i could do with 67 billion dollars if we got it <laughs> uh next um paypal plans to get into the crypto slash stable coin business and we're seeing you know a fair amount of stable coins in theory, stable coins are more stable than regular cryptocurrency because they're typically pegged to the dollar. But the reality is uh, it's software and it's startups and it's bad management and it's going down the, the proverbial rabbit hole. We see bankruptcy after bankruptcy of these stable coins. Um, and, uh, you know, the reality is, you know, uh, PayPal uh, has... Uh, uh, no government backing, right? It's a private company. It is not regulated. Um, and, you know, and they have about 400 million customers and they have about $35 billion worth of customers' assets in these, you know, unprotected um, uh, world, you know? And, you know, if you go off and buy that, you understand that, that if something happens, then you are an unsecured creditor in bankruptcy uh, and you get in line with the janitor and the you know, company selling the paper towels and whatever else. Um, so, you know, you won't get, you know, you won't get any of your money back. But um, uh, the reality is, you know, these guys want to go off and, and get into the business uh, because they think, you know, they can scam people. And I use that in only in the fondest definition of the term. Um you know, the House Financial Services Committee passed a bill, which obviously is far from it becoming law. I understand that. That would allow state licensed, uninsured, non-banks to issue stable coins like PayPal, for example, and prohibit the Fed from examining or supervising them. Um, you know, this is kind of a, I assume this is a state's rights kind of thing. Um, it's interesting that that Congress, you know, likes state rights when it's convenient for them and doesn't like it when it's not convenient. But anyway, um, you know, so, uh, you know, we're likely to repeat, you know, banking 
crises from the past, from the 1930s, 1980s. Uh, you know, it is about time for another banking crisis, uh, just chronologically. So, uh, you know, maybe the, this is a good plan. Anyway, um, if you have money in uh, a, an organization, not just PayPal, but any one of these, uh, you know, unregulated, unlicensed, uninsured organizations, understand that you're hoping that you'll be able to get your money out at some point in time in the future. Uh, next, um, under education, we're seeing some effort on the part of Congress uh, to educate themselves mostly on rural healthcare cybersecurity. It's a real problem, much bigger than a problem than in the big cities, because in the big city, you just go to the next hospital on the next block. In, in the rural setting, you know, you may have to drive 25, 30, 40 miles to get to another hospital if your hospital is down. And we've seen rural hospitals literally close because of cyber attacks. So Congress probably needs to help them. Um, we'll see whether this legislation passes, uh, but it certainly is a problem for rural hospitals. And, and this might be a little bit of help. Uh, in the breach department, uh, Title Max, which is a subprime lender, which means that they lend to risky individuals, uh, says their breach is worse than they thought. They're notifying 5, 000, 5 million people, not 5,000 people, 5 million people. Um, and think about the information that you give to a lender. And for a subprime lender, you probably give more. And because these people are people who likely are poor and underserved by the banking community, that's why they went to a uh, subprime lender in the first place. Um, they, uh, you know, have less resources to go off and fix the problem. Uh, next, uh, the French government agency, uh, um, and I'll probably butcher their name, Pole Employ, uh, it's the Unemployment uh, and Financial Aid Agency. Uh, they're informing 10 million of their customers that they got hacked in the movie breach. So this movie breach is a gift that, that keeps on coming, um, unfortunately. Uh, next, uh, you know those ubiquitous uh, badge readers that that many companies use because, uh, in fairness, to what I'm about to say, it, it does allow you to track uh, usage and it does um, uh, allow you to revoke uh, badges access uh, quickly. Uh, but the problem is that the Wigand wire uh, technology uh, really has almost no security in it whatsoever. Uh, the badges are easy to clone. The badge readers are easy to compromise. And there was a, a new technology that that maybe is, but certainly was, going to replace it. And apparently, it's no more secure. Um, so uh, you know, understand. Uh, you know, you may need compensating controls depending on your uh, risk tolerance. Uh, next, NIST has released the next version of Special Publication 800-172, 71, sorry. 172 actually is also in the works, but it has not been released yet. This is an initial public draft. Um, it's the standard for defense contractors, anybody that wants to do business with the Department of Defense, and also anybody that wants to do business with people who do business with the Department of Defense. So um, uh, it's gonna be released uh, in final form early next year. Uh, it makes some significant changes. Uh, the biggest one, in my opinion, is uh, addressing the issue of supply chain and vendor risk. And, um, you know, obviously we've seen many, many, many breaches associated with this. So I'm glad the Defense Department is um, uh, stepping up to the plate here. Uh, it does not mean that anything you've already done is uh, on 800 the current release, which is version two, uh, is wasted. It just means that uh, you're gonna have more uh, issues to deal with. Um, Next, uh, the House Republicans uh, are calling for more cyber regulation of federal contractors, but as is typical with uh, Congress critters, they don't really understand cybersecurity. So um, what the, this is a, a subcommittee that's passed a bill. So again, very far from becoming law. Uh, it's called the Federal Cybersecurity Vulnerability Act. Uh, the bill doesn't actually do anything to improve cybersecurity. Uh, but it does require all federal contractors to implement a vulnerability disclosure program. And uh, as far as I can tell, there's no size exclusion there. So if you're a one-person company, you still need to implement a vulnerability disclosure program. Uh, hopefully they will come to their senses and realize that that's pretty stupid. Um, 
uh, but it actually doesn't require them to uh, fix any of the vulnerabilities that were found. So, you know, there requires them to have the ability to uh, accept a vulnerability from uh, a white hat hacker, um, potentially pay them money, but that's not required either. And um, uh, and then uh, file the report in a drawer and not do anything about it. So uh, great job uh, for the house and improving cybersecurity. Uh, and next um, uh, in the news bias department, uh, the U.S. warns that uh, other countries are doing what, exactly what we do. The Air Force bragged about how they just set up a new branch to go hack satellites and satellite ground stations. And now the NSA is saying, hey, guess what? Other countries are hacking satellites and ground stations. And, and, and for people in that business and people who use satellites, which is like all of us, um, most of, mostly behind the scenes, but we don't recognize it, um, you know, there's a danger here. Um, also, uh, it's time to start preparing, preparing for Q day. That's the uh, day when quantum computing is, is, you know, large scale in production available for everybody. Um, and that, uh, involves changing crypto, uh, algorithms. And the reason why we're beating the drum for this now is because all of our adversaries are collecting encrypted data. And, and with the hope that once quantum computing comes out, they'll be able to break it, which they will. Uh, so if you start uh, using uh, uh, quantum resistant algorithms now, uh, you know, the data that will be compromised will be older data. So let's assume this is made up. There's five years from now when quantum computing large scale is available to nation states maybe less than that, but let's say it's five years. So if you start implementing quantum computing now, and of course, you know, it's not flipping a switch. So now is probably not really actually possible. Um, you uh, will, the data that will be compromisable, i.e. ones that are using pre-quantum computing algorithms will be older data and hopefully less valuable, hopefully. Um, uh, next, the IRS starting with tax year 2025, is going to require reporting of crypto transactions, all crypto transactions, um, and and cash to crypto conversions of ten thousand dollars or more. Um, you know, if you use a crypto exchange, they will report that for you. So, um, you know, the idea here, I think, is to get at tax cheats who are making money off of crypto and not reporting it, not paying taxes on it. Uh, and lastly, the UN is working on final negotiations for a cyber crime treaty. The problem is the criminals are not gonna go adopt the, the treaty even if the UN passes it. So it will be of limited value, but it will provide a, a platform for people who do wanna cooperate to do that in a more coordinated fashion. It's gonna be limited in scope, which is probably good given all the competing uh, agendas in the UN, uh, but we shall see whether anything happens. If they this committee creates something, the UN will, won't vote on it until next year. Um, and uh, with that, thanks for listening. If you have questions, if you need help building a data retention policy, please reach out to us. But until next time, stay safe. Turnkey Cybersecurity and Privacy Solutions offers the complete cybersecurity program for small to medium-sized businesses. They include everything needed to secure your business and meet compliance requirements. Visit our website at turnkeycybersecurityandprivacysolutions.com to learn more.